Our next speaker is Jade Sheik. Good morning, my name is Jade and I will be delivering my speech entitled True Courage. My Chinese friends have always told me that I have an excellent sanguine, which means having strong moral courage. One quality I value is courage, especially in the face of injustice, big and small. It has been this way ever since I was sorted as a Gryffindor by Pottermore, although sometimes I was a Ravenclaw. Whether inside or outside of school, I loved standing up for myself and for others. As a child, I never strayed from this value, even when it made me lose some friends or become the topic of gossip. It had always been an aspect of me that I deeply cherished. And for me, it was a total disgrace to be a coward. So how did I end up as one? Last March, after booking seven tickets with six of them canceled, I finally arrived at Logan Airport with my friend, both super relieved to be going back home to Beijing, but also very anxious to fly during COVID. I wore my usual outfit for a flight, an oversized hoodie, sweatpants, and my favorite pair of sneakers. But what was different from my dozens of other airplane trips was the double layer of mask on my face, surgical gloves tightly constricting my hands, a pair of glasses, and a small bottle of hand sanitizer in my pocket. I glanced around and heard fam familiar chatters in Chinese, and I realized that a lot of the people on my plane are from China and most of them were high school or college students. My phone buzzed from the incoming messages from my parents, grandparents, friends, classmates, and people who I have stopped talking to for years. And they were all telling me to stay safe and to never ever take off the masks. I replied to my family with, I love you guys, I'm doing pretty well, I'm pretty safe right now, and ignored the rest of the messages. My legs were stiff and sore from waiting in line at the ticket counter, and I tapped my feet impatiently, hoping for time to pass just a bit faster. And then out of nowhere, I heard shouting. I looked around. The sound came from a man in a bright blue hoodie without a mask. And he was coming up close to everyone in line and pointing his fingers at us menacingly. At first, I was in a daze. Although I could sense the absolute anger and hate, I could not understand what he was yelling. But then I caught the racially charged words spitting out of his mouth. I was stunned. I backed up, waiting for someone to step in. Airport security guards were standing 50 meters away from us, but they did nothing. Just stood there and witnessed what was happening. The others in line were fidgeting around and whispering nervously to each other. My friend pulled me close and told me to be quiet, to look down and to ignore the crazy guy. I really wasn't planning on doing anything otherwise. So we just stood there waiting for the commotion to pass. Yes, at that moment I kept silent. But even now I do not regret this as it is totally understandable. I was tired, my focus was on the flight I did not want things to escalate. And most importantly, I was scared for my own safety. But what bothers me is that I thought of what happened as insignificant and did not speak up about it afterwards. I was not aware of how severe and prevalent my experience was until I came across a New York Times article about the racism that East Asians, especially the Chinese, have been facing during the pandemic. Of course, I knew that racism affects all people of color, but it was somehow unconsciously engraved in my head that I was not oppressed enough to be the target of racial attacks and remarks. I thought that slurs like chink were somehow much less derogatory than terms directed towards other races. Now, I believe this misconception partly stemmed from my childhood. Having grown up in Beijing, I was always the majority. Although Beijing is a diverse city with people coming from all over the world, most of the residents are still born and raised in China. 
Every day I was surrounded by people with the same dark brown or black hair, people with the same beige colored skin, and people who speak the same language and have the same traditions. And even when it came to Faye, the atmosphere was so exceptionally inclusive and welcoming that there was not a time where I felt like I was the minority because of my race. And so this feeling of privilege stuck, stuck with me. My misconception also came from the media, which provided very little coverage on the racism that East Asians have experienced in its history until the outbreak. In songs, movies, and YouTube videos, performers will mention blacks and whites, but they seem to forget those of us who are beige. We also face prejudice and unfairness although perhaps in different manners and to different extents. It led me to think that as a so-called model minority, my story did not matter as much. To me, speaking up will only make others believe I was exaggerating my experiences and disregarding other more important voices. Reflecting on my personal story, I was misled by the internet and by the safe places where I grew up. How can people be courageous in times like this when they never realize that they themselves could be the victim? We can only take action by first being aware of present issues and by recognizing the importances of using our voice. Now, I'm devoting more time to understanding the history of racism towards East Asians and also focusing more on the current news on the topic. I tried to empathize with those who have dealt with unfairness for their entire lives and to speak up about these issues, starting with my speech. Now that is true courage. Thank you.